Hey everybody, John Fenn here, SupernaturalHouseChurch.org. You know, the Supernatural and SupernaturalHouseChurch.org is about the process of discipleship. And we're a house church network. It's all about uh, the supernatural work of God in us. And, uh, and that's what it's about. And so today, this week, actually, I'm going to be traveling in Finland. And uh, next Wednesday, I will go to Norway. So uh, just a quick word here this morning, but I was specifically directed to talk about um, the personal prophecies of Matthew 2. And this will help us when we, when the, we have a promise from the Lord, if, if we have something that he has quickened to our heart, a scripture's jumped out at us, some promise that we feel we've got from the Lord, and this will, be, this will help us. In Matthew chapter 2, there are three, pers- three prophecies about Jesus surrounding his birth and his early weeks and months. Uh, the first one is in, I think it's verse 22, that talks about that it might be fulfilled that you, Bethlehem, are not the least in the kingdom of Judah, for out of you the deliverer will come. So the first thing says the Messiah will come from Bethlehem. A few verses on down, it tells us about how Herod wanted to kill uh, baby Jesus. And so uh, Joseph is warned in a dream and he goes to Egypt and then he's warned again or, or allowed again by the angel of the Lord to come out of Egypt. And it says that it might be fulfilled out of Egypt I have called my son. So there we've got two apparently conflicting prophecies. One, that, that the Messiah will come from Bethlehem. The second, that he's going to come from Egypt. And the last verse of Matthew chapter 2 says that they settled in Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, that he will be called a Nazarene. So there you've got three prophecies in Matthew 2 that appear to be completely unrelated and even contradictory because it says the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem, he will come out of Egypt, he will come from Nazareth. And so that is the way, that's a good snapshot of God's words to us. Maybe, for instance, you were were reading through, you know, Acts chapter 16, where the Philippian jailer is saying, what must I do to be saved? And Paul says, you know, if you you and your household will believe, then you'll be saved. And maybe the Lord quickens that, and and you just know in your heart suddenly that, that your son will be saved, or your spouse will be saved, or that loved one will be saved. And maybe some other time you'll be driving through a part of town and, and you just have quickened in your spirit that the next place you're going to live is in that section of town. And, and you have different elements here where the Lord will cause a scripture to jump out at you. Or maybe you'll be listening to some teacher or preacher on the, the TV or in, in your church or something like that. And maybe one line out of their message will just really speak to your heart and it's revelation and you know that you know that that's for you. All those are like unrelated prophecies, unrelated, just like Matthew chapter 2 being unrelated. And, and there's, there's things about those that you have to understand. Prophecy, uh, by definition in, in 1 Corinthians 14.3, is a word of edification, exhortation, or comfort. And you have to understand, and I'll say it this way, prophecy, a prophetic word to you, that is a, a word that the Lord has spoken to you to build you up, to encourage you, to, um, to comfort you. That is not your destination. It is merely a marker on the road that you are on the right path. It's merely a sign along the road that you are on the right path. It's not your destination. And, and a lot of people, unfortunately, elevate a uh, word of prophecy to, to think that is their destination, but it really is not. It's just, it's, it, and so by that, what I mean is we do not work to try to fulfill that prophecy. We just go about our business in life, and then it will come to pass over the course of life. So there's some wisdom in that. Trust me, I have tried to help the Lord before, and, uh, and it has not been successful. One very almost tragic uh, example from my own life is when... Uh, in, in September of 1977, the Lord had told Barb and I, who were dating at the time, uh, number one, that we could be married the following year, which we were married in September of 78. And he also said he'd called us and was going to send us to Boulder, Colorado. And so at the time we were in college, and here, flash forward, that's September 77. Flash forward to May of 1980, I've now graduated from Bible school. We're living in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. We know it's time to go to Boulder, Colorado. I am anxious to go. I am ready to go. And I, in praying about it, we both felt September was the time to move. But in my mind, that doesn't make any sense, you know, because Boulder, Colorado is a university town. I'm thinking jobs. I'm thinking housing. I'm thinking if we go in May, you know, the kids will be leaving the college campus and there'll be rental properties, you know, for rent and all the different things along those lines. And so in my mind, it didn't understand why the Lord would say September, go in September. But, but I to my own fault, I pushed it and we rented a duplex sight unseen just through the newspaper sight unseen um, from Broken Arrow to this this duplex up there in the Boulder area. And um, and it was dur- and, and we moved up there in May 
And it was the hardest three months of our life. In fact, Barb nearly died. She had locked her keys in the house and had uh, tried to crawl in through an open window, through the bathroom window, had put her hand on the shower curtain rod, thinking that that was a solid rod, and she fell face first and crushed the right side of her face, hitting her cheekbone on the toilet. She had to have surgery to have it restored. And um, and they told her, they told her that her right side of her face would look like a, a you know, stroke victim. I mean, we were 21 years old. And she said they'd be paral- she'd be paralyzed because she shattered the nerves and they had to rebuild the eye socket. She had skull fractures going back. And, of course, we rejected that. We laid hands on her once. Well, the way we do is we lay hands on once because I truly believe the name of Jesus is the most powerful name of the universe, so it only needs to be used once. And after that, began, we began worshiping the Lord and, 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 uh, and just worshiping him. And, and not worship like, hey, I'm worshiping you, Lord. Thank you for healing my wife, you know, which is really an ulterior motive and not true worship because you're attaching things to it. Uh, we learned early on, even as teenagers, you just worship for worship's sake. So we laid hands once, commanded her to be healed, commanded the nerves to grow, etc. And then we just worshiped. By the end of seven days, she was starting to get feeling back. By the end of 30 days, she was completely restored. And now we're going to be 59 years old this year, and, and you can't tell anything. She's never had any problem, any paralysis, any palsy, anything from, from that. But the fact is, she nearly died all because I jumped the gun and went in May instead of September. So that's a, that's a thing there, a cautionary tale to say, you know, when you receive different words, don't try to make it come to pass, but just allow it to come to pass. And also realize that prophecy, you know, these, these are labels for us. A lot of people are, you're more spiritual than what you realize. Uh, the labels are, are merely for us. These are just manifestations of the Holy Spirit. So when that page, you know, that verse jumps off the page or that somebody's sitting there in the coffee shop with you and they're speaking and you say, wow, that wisdom is really from the Lord for me. Thank you so much for that. That all comes under the category. And what we find in house church is that is the category of prophecy and, and words of knowledge and words of wisdom really happen much more common out in life and, and not so much in the house church meetings, although it happens. But uh, all the gifts of the Spirit and everything actually happen uh, as a course of life, much like it did with Jesus and the apostles, as demonstrated in the Gospels in the book of Acts. But uh, I I wanted to share that with you today, that maybe you've got words from the Lord that are just, um, they seem unrelated, just like the prophecies of Matthew 2, and you're not sure how they can come to pass. Number one, don't worry about it. Don't try to make it come to pass. Number two, realize hindsight is 2020 or prophecy is 2020 in hindsight. In other words, you know, the, after the fact, then we say, oh, that's what happened. That's what that was about. That's why that was the way it was. So you hold these things in your heart, but you don't try to force them and make them come to pass. Uh, my wife nearly died because I did that once in the, the spring of 1980 and, uh, and never again. So just sharing that with you and I'll let you go and I will get going as well. Like I said, uh, in Finland uh, this week and in Norway next week. And home again May 1st, but I'll talk to you from Norway next week. God bless.